all right boys and girls welcome back to the channel uh assume my 390 riding position which is so different than the 690 now that uh yeah it's like gotta learn how to ride every time i jump on a bike man um okay so i never officially did a review that i posted anyway of this ktm 390 duke um and i talk a lot about it but i haven't really done a review of it so i'm uh, heading down to the office today to run some errands and pick up some mail and go to the bank and all that and i figured it is a beautiful day out it is time to take out the 390 again and give her a spin and so I think I thought I'd take you guys along the ride with me and talk about this amazing bike. So I have just about 600 and well, 37 miles on this bike now. Uh, I just did the oil change, um, which was super fun to do actually. Um, there's, if you've never done an oil change on a KTM, um, it's a little different than other oil changes you might have done. Uh, there's a lot of parts to replace. Uh, they have a few different filters and straighteners and things like that on the bike. It's kind of unusual. Um, so yeah, um, but I, I got this bike with only 130 miles on it. Uh, it was practically brand new. Uh, it's a 2019 KTM Duke. Uh, I don't really know if these bikes come with a lot of options or not, but this thing is pretty sweet. Obviously, as you can see that um, the dash is just about the nicest dash you can get on a bike uh, south of 10 grand. And uh, I picked this bike up practically new with some really nice saddlebags and things like that, which I've since sold. I got the bike for 4,600 bucks. And uh, like I said, it's a 2019. And I got it, a, I actually got it a few months ago. Uh, I just haven't had a time to uh, do a proper review. Yeah, I should have caught that light. Okay, so let's talk about it a little bit. Uh, obviously a single cylinder, relatively small displacement uh, motor. This bike for me is replacing my Grom. Um, uh, some of you saw my uh, Grom bashing video where I basically said, it doesn't make sense to own a Grom when this bike exists because this is a small bike. Uh, it can do all the cool things that the Grom can do and uh, the Grom can't do any of the things that this bike can do including getting on the freeway. Uh, and uh, I've hit a top speed of like 105 miles an hour on this thing, maybe 106 I think, uh, which obviously no Grom could ever even come close to that. Um, and, uh, and this thing can eat up the canyons like nobody's business. Um, so yeah, um, let's see, other, other stuff it comes with, uh, obviously all the cool electronic gadgetry you, you expect from a modern bike nowadays, mine is the quick shifter. Now I don't really need a quick shifter on this bike, I'm not trying to get, like, I'm not trying to race anybody on this bike. This is not a high horsepower bike where I would want to be doing that. Um, and uh, clutch feels amazing, brakes feel incredible. Um, it's got plenty of get up and go um, to get me up to speed quick. And uh, this one came with this really nice uh, wind deflector. Uh, I, I think this is an aftermarket bit that the previous owner that had this bike for a whole haul of 130 miles uh, put on here. So that was cool of him because I really, really enjoy it. Um, really adds to the look of the bike as well. And uh, let's see, it has a um, like a Bluetooth interface with the phone and everything, but I'll be honest with you, that has proven to be absolutely and utterly useless. So I actually, my phone is paired to it right now, but I don't ever use that pairing feature. And I plan to actually unpair my phone from it today because one of the problems is your phone, your phone pairs to it. So when you get a call, if you're near the bike, your phone is paired and uh, you won't be able to hear the call because it's trying to talk through the bike, which you don't have a headset connected to also. Um, so I've essentially 
I'm not going to use any of that feature, but the rest of the um, infotainment, or let's call it the dash, or instrument cluster, or whatever your term for it is, is uh, the best I've ever had, I guess. Uh, considering my other bikes don't really have anything close to anything like this. Um, and the Grom certainly did not. Uh, so yeah, um, let's see, transmission, uh, six-speed gearbox, absolutely butter smooth, really great feedback, never gets stuck between gears, easy to find neutral for me anyway. And the other thing I've noticed about this bike, and actually also my 690, and this is like a really big deal that, that may go unnoticed because of how, how smooth it is, you don't even think about it. You know when you're in a corner and you you get on your accelerator a little bit to come out of the turn? Well, in that scenario, most bikes, you kind of have to like play this game with the clutch and the accelerator where you're just kind of like making sure you don't create a jerkiness in your motion because you're in a turn. But with this bike, I, I've never even... I've never even thought of that and also with my 690 it's kind of amazing I don't know if it's it's an it's an all KTM thing or not but and or maybe I just got lucky and I got two bikes that that just have been acting nicely or whatever and maybe whoever set this bike up did a really good job of setting up the throttle um, whatever it is I I feel like this is the best um, bike in in uh, that that specific cornering ability like uh, the let's see what would you call that the jerkiness in in turn capability so it's missing all of that jerkiness I don't I don't even feel it um, I keep having to open my helmet lid because it's actually a little hot out today it's the first hot day of riding I've had the other day was kind of hot but it started out super cold so I was kind of happy that it got hot but today it's just hot <laughs> um, of course now I'm having a hard time with neutral <laughs> now that I said that all right um, let's see what else um, yeah it, it has a it has two ABS modes there's road and supermoto um, supermoto basically allows you to lock the back wheel which is again super cool for a for a bike in this price range to have different modes for ABS um, and uh, yeah um, the really high revving motor 10,000 rpm or so um, and I think there was a and it's kind of hard for me to remember when I hit six I think before 600 rpm I'm um, 600 miles the the rev limiter may have been a little lower than 10,000 it might have been like 9,500 or something like that but um, hard to say looks of this bike guys gosh this is this bike gets more comments from people than any of my other bikes any of my other bikes any bike I've ever owned uh, I get a lot of people, especially people who obviously don't know a lot about bikes because this doesn't necessarily look like a small displacement bike. Um, people are just always going, oh my god, what kind of bike is that? Where do I get one of those? How much does that cost? And it, it surprises me because as a bike guy, I wouldn't I wouldn't be that, right? Like most bike guys, they see a 390, they know what they're dealing with for the most part. It's a small displacement motor and it is what it is uh, but it's it doesn't become like a huge fan bike with the bike community but outside the bike community this thing has like it catches a lot of eyes i think part of it is the color scheme the paint scheme which is absolutely brilliant and gorgeous the quality of the paint on this bike is phenomenal i think um and uh let's see here you guys always give me a lot of shit for leaving my signals on and I keep doing it I, I don't know I don't know what's wrong with me lately especially it's been uh, I've been especially bad about it oh there's a gladiator hi Whee! I don't like that color I like my color 
so yeah okay so um, we talked about the looks we talked about the brakes and the transmission and, and whatnot ergonomically this bike is super comfortable that my, my legs are a little too bent I feel like like the controls are a little high and a little far back um, I, I bet there's an option for moving them a little bit I think like an inch down and an inch forward would kind of be like the perfect sweet spot for me um, but hard to complain I mean I've been on this bike I think um, we went up to GMR and back for full day ride one time um, that was kind of I think the longest ride I've done on this bike obviously um, and uh, I was totally comfortable the whole day I didn't it, it didn't bother me one bit uh, riding up there and back uh, just kind of have to stretch your legs a couple of times like that and uh, pretty good shape uh, the seat is comfortable it's a big seat um, and uh, I haven't had a pillion on here I mean it's a 390 I weigh like two something 215 or something like that right now um, having somebody else on the back would probably be a little much but a lot of guys who ride this bike are, are smaller than I am like I've, I see a lot of posts on the Facebook group and a lot of guys are, are probably in the 150 to 165 range and that's a perfect range for having a pillion um, I think on this bike it's got plenty of power for it I mean it, it's got more than enough power to haul me around um, without me ever feeling like I need more um, sure could I use more power of course yes I have more bikes that are you know I, you know my bikes are mostly 100 plus horsepower bikes but and this is this is my um, I don't want to call it weak oh you know, notice how it changes the dash uh, light scheme to dark when I'm in a overpass or darker space and now it's going to go back to light again there it goes um, yeah so I, I i think if you're worried about this having enough power for you i mean you know if you weigh less than me it certainly doesn't, doesn't you won't need more power i don't think um, this thing gets me up to speed no problem and very quickly on the freeway here we go So yeah, let's see what else. Um, yeah, so like you're not gonna keep up with with like high displacement bikes on straightaways. Obviously, I mean they'll they'll eat your lunch on this bike. Uh, this thing doesn't have a very fast zero to sixty here. It probably looks like six sec six seconds or something like that right there. I could probably do five. Full bike. Jeez, Look how pretty that is. Oh, by the way, I love this pillion seat. This is my like favorite thing. <laughs> my favorite thing. Look how gorgeous. So pretty. So super pretty. Uh, mirrors. Uh, KTM has some ugly mirrors, and they got these little boots around them, which I never understood. Um, but I like these mirrors, actually. I... Uh, I'm not going to change the mirrors on my 390. I changed the mirrors on my 690. Uh, and I don't know if I really regret that decision or like that decision just yet. I ended up getting some Husky 701 uh, mirrors that somebody just gave me on the uh, on Facebook group. You saw how, how sharp those turns are? I mean, I'm not even trying. And I know it's not a fast turn or anything, but... The fact that you can just like super do a really tight lean into turns with this bike without having to worry about it um, is amazing. And you know what? Somebody told me a really cool saying yesterday. The guy that actually bought my saddlebags yesterday, he came by and he has a 390 and he said, he said something really cool. He said, I would much rather go fast on a slow bike than go slow on a fast bike. And something similar to that like because if you get a super fast bike you're never going to go as fast as it can go so you're going kind of slow but if you're at this bike you can go pretty much as fast as it can go and um you know like really enjoy it i'm gonna go to the bank now and do some stuff of course this bank's been closed since the beginning of the pandemic and this parking lot is taken over by a lab that's i think processing COVID tests so, if you don't see the irony in that, the first parking spot. 
All right, one bank down. And this bike is like super popular in India. Shout out to you guys watching from India. Uh, I, I love how India, and I, it's like the one place in the world I haven't been, I've traveled most of Asia um, and all of Europe and parts of South America, obviously North America, um, like uh, New Zealand and uh, a lot of the world, but not India. And I don't really have much of a desire to go, honestly. Um, maybe one day. Um, I, I guess I just don't have a rather desire to travel these days. But um, but what, what I find super intriguing about India is like motorcycles are huge in India. Like most of the content I find on most of my bikes actually comes from India, um, which I, I think obviously is super interesting. Uh, being that, you know, the U.S. is probably the least motorcycle uh, populated country I've been to, honestly. Like, people ride motorcycles in the U.S. out of, um, oh my god, this guy. Um, can you guys hear that music? Uh, so, it's like a mariachi band playing right in my helmet. Um, there we go. Most people in the U.S., like ride motorcycles for leisure. Now, I'm not saying everybody, settle down. Put your keyboard down, God damn it. I didn't say everyone, most people. Um, but in, in other countries, like when we were in Vietnam and we rode motorcycles from the north to the south of Vietnam, which was a life-changing trip for me. I absolutely love that country. People ride motorcycles because that's what, that's how you get from like point A to point B. There is almost no other way. Like there are vans and things like that, that haul tourists around. But if you live in Vietnam, oh God, this guy's like keeping up with me here. If you live in Vietnam, that is pretty much like your mode of transportation. That's I think true with most of Asia. And I think India, again, I haven't been, but I think it may just be the motorcycle capital of the world. What do you think? Let me know where you think the motorcycle capital of the world is. Shout out again to India and shout out to Vietnam. I, I um, much respect for how much you guys ride. Um, I think you're pretty much like born on two wheels in some of those countries. Maybe you guys know, why is the 390 specifically so popular in India? Okay, I'm going to interrupt the video here because I want to start doing something similar to what Doug does with his Doug score. And I've divided my categories into Canyon and Commute. So we'll start with this KTM 390 Duke and we'll see how this ends up. Uh, in the Canyon category for styling, I give this bike a solid 8. I think this is one of the most beautiful bikes on the road. Gets a lot of comments. So... Styling wise, easy eight for me. Uh, speed and acceleration. Obviously, it's a thumper. 390 small displacement motor, barely pushing 40 horsepower. You're not going to get a lot out of it, so I'll give it a four out of 10. Handling wise, this is one of the best handling bikes I've ridden because of its small size and how nimble it is. Uh, but it's not a sports bike. You wouldn't really take it to the track in a meaningful way, so I'm going to give it a six out of 10. Cool factor is high. I get a lot of people are approaching me about this bike and uh, talking about it. They want to know what kind of bike it is, where I got it from, how much it is, where they can get one. So that to me is a high cool factor and I will give it a seven out of 10 for cool factor. Fun factor, this is one of my most fun bikes. I have six bikes in the garage and I, if, if I'm trying to have fun, I'm taking out the 390. Part of the reason is, is, is that small displacement actually allows me to take additional risks that I wouldn't do on a larger displacement bike. So I end up having a much bigger grin on my face at the end. So that's a total Canyon score of 33. Now in the commute category, 
We'll start with features. This bike is pretty feature rich. I mean, it has traction control, ABS, and you saw that beautiful instrument, instrument cluster with uh, Bluetooth and um, all kinds of different features. And I will give it a seven out of 10 for features. Um, comfort, comfort is actually pretty great on this bike, but again, you've got to compare it to all bikes and you know, obviously it's not a cruiser or a adventure bike or a long distance tourer. So I'll give it a six by six out of 10. Uh, quality, it seems high, but KTM is plagued with bad quality issues. And uh, you can go to any of the forums and and uh, see some of the issues people are having. And when I was changing my, doing my first oil change, I noticed a lot of gasket deposits in the oil pan, which is terrible. And uh, hopefully it doesn't mean that I'm going to have issues with the bike, but uh, it speaks to poor quality, and I'll give it a 5 out of 10. Practicality <laughs> is high. Very easy to zip around town. It's got great fuel mileage. People get 60 miles to the gallon um, on this bike, and I think that's pretty impressive. Uh, it's got plenty of speed to be on the freeway or uh, go around on the street. Uh, there's uh, tons of um, aftermarket parts out there for it. So practicality, to me, is 7 out of 10. Value, again, very high uh, because you can get a used one of these just like I did with almost no miles on it for $4,600. $4,600 really doesn't buy you a whole lot of bike these days uh, and uh, especially a, a, a beautiful European bike like this KTM with all, all those bells and whistles. So for value, I'll give it an 8 out of 10 for a total commute score of 33. Add it together and a total score is 66, which... As you can see, it's the only bike I've ever reviewed. So that's the first one and it gets a 66. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video and you'll join me for the next one where hopefully I will do another score on one of my other bikes. Click that, click that subscribe button and uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.